Hi, this is Robert, one half of the 12 Pound Podcast. Uh, Welcome back to our show. As a quick reminder, our show discusses life's changes and how we hope to help you face them through shared stories and experiences. I co-host this wonderful show with my mother, Bobby. Hi, Bob. Hi, Robert. How are you doing? I'm good. Where you been? (laughs) That's a good question. Where have you been? It's uh, it's our first recording in a while. The last time we dropped an episode was on April 20th, 2023. So we took the summer off and a little bit of the spring. And now we're here. Maybe we dropped it too hard. I think we, you know, we talked about death. It was, remember we interviewed uh, a doula until death, death doula, doula part. Until death doula part. And I think it took us a little while to recover from that I one. I think it was too much for us. I think we went to death yeah, too we quickly. Went, yeah. That's a season two thing. <laughs> That's a winter thing. It's a winter thing. Yeah, it was springtime. Or, it was springtime. It was Everything really was interesting. blooming and yeah. blossoming. Yeah, exactly. Although it was a very interesting podcast, but maybe that's, you know, I'm trying to figure out where, we're trying to figure out what we can tell you as to where we've been. I can tell you where I haven't been. Where? Here, <laughs> recording this podcast. Yeah. But where have I been? I was uh, at Drexel University. I was teaching full time. I'm now a professor at the school. It's official. I have health insurance. And I have another podcast, as you know, that we produce and that I host called the Dakota Podcast, where I speak to asset allocators, not alligators. I thought you were going to say ass. I speak to asses. Alligators. My six-year-old thinks I speak to alligators. Oh, cool. With a G. So she loves it. Every time I tell her what I did, I said, I talked to an alligator. She's like, oh my gosh. So I took her to the studio a couple of times to show her that they're just people, not alligators. And then what else has been going on? We've had some other personal stuff going on, um, dealing with some family health stuff. So we've been focused a little bit on that and traveling a little bit. And then you've been, you've been, uh, you, you've been honing your skills. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Having an addictive personality. It's got to go somewhere. <laughs> you got to do something, yeah. right? It's either Twinkies or tequila. It's either cappuccino. Yeah. Uh, but what I've been doing, I, I, I've been playing pickleball. Oh, I like it. You and I, the rest of the world. My little granddaughter, she's three, was out watching, uh, was here over the weekend and was out watching TV. And I was leaving in the morning, actually, just to go to the store. But I was leaving in the morning and she said, Baba, you going to play pickleball? <laughs> I was <laughs> like, oh, my God. Oh, geez. Yeah. But I actually wasn't, but uh, that's kind of what I've been doing and enjoying the summer. Um, Hot. It's been quite hot out there, but it's, um, you you know, you know that you're playing. You know, one thing you know is that you're involved in a game because it's, uh, you're dripping. So it's, but it's, um, it's so much fun. Well, you and the rest of the world. So pickleball participation has grown an average of 160%. Over the last three years, it is the fastest growing sport in America. Wow. I wonder what the last fastest growing sport was. I wonder, I mean, that took off like this. What took off like this? A sport. You know, Mm. I don't know that because it's an interesting sport. A water Um, sport. I know paddle boarding was the fastest growing water sport for a while. People love to get on their paddle boards. There's something about paddles. Yeah, but I mean, you don't go down to Sunset Lake and see hundreds of people paddling around the water. You just don't see. I mean, it's, yeah, people took it up, but. I think it was just a perfect storm, right? You had COVID, right? So everybody had been stuck in their house, but they could go outside and you could stay generally six feet apart. So pickleball, it's not like it was invented three years ago. It's been a long time. A long time. It's been a sport that's been played for a long time. I think I was telling you when I was living in uh, Fairfield County, Connecticut, it was a, a big sport in the area. People had pickleball. There were pickleball courts uh, in Fairfield, Connecticut. People would go play them in the winter. I think and that's the where it started, right? I think, I don't know no, for I'm sure. I'm pretty sure I just saw it. Uh, pretty sure. Yes. Um, yeah, so we, so wherever it started, it's, it's gotten big though. I think it started with COVID, meaning this growth, it's like kind of a perfect storm of opportunity. People want to be outside. You can be older and do it. You can be younger and do it. You can play with your parents. You can play with your grandparents. Um, doesn't cost too much. And then you had all this space available, right? You had all these tennis courts that weren't generally being used. Everybody, you know, we love tennis. I love tennis. You love tennis too. You were a coach. I played under you, that dictatorial system oh, that you, right. <laughs> you, right, that right. you enforced. That's a lie. That's you a lie. Me, you drove me it? away from the sport. 
<laughs> it's a lie, <laughs> listeners. And uh, yeah, yeah. So I, I think there was a lot of a lot of things going on that made it really attractive. Yeah, I think you hit um, kind of a nail on the head, and that is, it's it's easier, I think, to be proficient, somewhat proficient at pickleball. Coming from a tennis background, you can kind of spot immediately the the tennis players. Um, it's because they're taking average. a full swing. No, they have um, they have racket skills. They have movement skills. Um, I mean, if you were an above average tennis player, you're into placement. You're into doubles. You're into um, yeah. You can just spot them. You can kind of just spot them. It's not everything isn't new, and they move. You know, they can. You know, there's movement where. I, I think another reason that you touched on was age and you don't have to be a super jock, you know, or have all kinds of athletic prowess to be pretty decent. And that's interesting, you know, because there's all levels where in tennis, you kind of find who you play with. You're not going to go take your racket and go down to the court and say, hey, you know, there's a million opportunities to play. You know, it just doesn't happen. So it's so accessible. Yeah, and one one tennis court can become two pickleball courts. It doesn't take up as much room. So doesn't. people are even able to put it in their, honestly, I've seen people put it in their driveways. Wow. Um, a friend of mine actually did that, um, lacking a little bit of a, a space, but it doesn't, I mean, it's it's pretty cool. That's so, how the horrific yeah, so pickleball sto- accidents start. Yeah, I know, I know. So that's kind of what I've been doing along with um just enjoying the summer, and it's amazing how quickly it's going. But I'm glad to be back. We've been saying we got, you know, we have to get back because we so enjoy doing this, and we have all kinds of things, you know, to share with you that I'm sure you've just been. Where are they? I've got a list. Hold on, let me. <laughs> Did you I shuffle, yeah, I've got a list. Shuffle that again. Shuffle that again. Shuffle Hold on that one again. This is the list of things that I want to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> now, what I wanted to talk about was coming back because we've we've come back, which is good. It's been a few months, um, but that's funny. That's kind of how these podcasts go. You know, you start to go. We, I think we had twenty five or twenty seven that were down and released, and then we had to take a little break. But you know, we didn't want people to forget how how awesome this show was. <laughs> so we're uh, we're back again. But yeah, we're coming back. What's coming back mean to you, Mom? Coming back is that a no? Coming home is that a movie? Coming home. I don't know. Yeah. Somebody in a wheelchair, Vietnam veteran, coming home. No? Okay. Um, Maybe. Maybe? I'll look it up while you're talking. Okay. Maybe. Coming back. What does coming back mean to me? Mm, Lots of different things. I guess it's the situation that you're coming back from. You know, we just talked about coming back to our podcast, but, you know, coming back can mean all kinds of things. Let, Let me think. I have to get a handle on this. Situations happen, you know, in life. Um, some of them are great, like you've been on vacation. Like we just talked about, you've been playing pickleball. You've been doing all kinds of exciting stuff that has been occupying a lot of your time. And it's time to come back or get back to what it was you were doing. So that's one thing that coming back means to me. And the other would be more of a coming back from something not so good. Um, possibly um, an illness, you know, people, you know, from breaking your leg to sp- just spraining your ankle, um, you know, then you're going to have to come back after therapy and all that kind of good stuff, a breakup, a relationship breakup, um, and, you know, et cetera, all kinds of things that, you know, you could list that are kind of not so good things that happen in your life to everyone, to all of us. And then you have to get back in the game. Say, get back, put me in, coach. That's what I said, put me in, get me back in the game. And that caused me last night, actually, to think about the word reinvention and what that means to, what that means to the, the, you know, people listening to our podcast. You know, different words take on different meanings and a different life to different people. I was going to talk to you about that because... I have re I, I feel as though I have reinvented myself numerous times. And to someone who relates to that out there in listening land, for the longest time I thought that reinventing myself was a weakness. You know, was 
oh boy, that didn't work out or something's happened and now I have to make some changes. So you've made a lot of changes. So then when you get to be my age, people ask you what you've done in your life and you start rattling off different things that you've done and accomplished, but you feel a little, well, you know, I can't say, oh, I've, you know, I've worked in corporate for 45 years and, you know, I have a pension and I'm blah, blah, blah. <laughs> I'm like not there. <laughs> yeah, not quite. Not quite there. And I've uh, done an awful lot of different things and enjoyed, I would say, all of them. Um, but there were reasons for reinvention. So anyway, that's kind of long around way of talking a little bit about um, about coming about coming back and well, thanks a lot. That's the end of our show. We appreciate you. <laughs> <laughs> we appreciate it. Oh, you gotta love this guy. You have to. I mean, I just have to in order. <laughs> Boy, that that was like going to Boston. You know, one road takes you to another. Next thing you know, we're reinventing ourselves. <laughs> oh, that's well, let's good. get back to let's get back to coming back. Come, so coming back. So we're coming back. It's it's funny you said that because I was thinking about it as you were talking. I think it was about fifteen minutes ago. <laughs> You were talking. Oh, you weren't finished, you, you right? Were ta- <laughs> okay. You were talking about coming back, and I think as kids, we're conditioned to to get used to that feeling of coming back because we go back to school, we leave school every spring, we come back every fall, and it's it's part of the culture, right? Back to school, you come back to your friends, you go to your summer camp, but you come back. Yeah. So you get very used to it, essentially, until you get through college if you decide to go on to college. But even if you stop at high school, it's something that we learn to do. But then it does just kind of stop. And then you are at work or you are at home or you're raising kids. So that whole idea of coming back, you, you kind of have to, you may forget how to do it and you have to get used to it again. Yeah. So, um, you know, so when you have to come back from something, it can be, it can be a steep learning curve because you've, you've forgotten about it. Um, but as kids, we really kind of, we teach them, you know, that they're going to have to leave things and they're going to have to come back to things. Um, so, you know, for, for me, like coming back to something, it's usually making sure it's like more of the mechanics of it, like the process. Like, do I remember what my, uh, going back to school, do I remember what my pass word is or my code to my lock on my locker? You know, do I remember where my classrooms are? Do I remember the process of how to get from one place to another? And then when you come back from an injury is you have to remember, you know, how you did something like you've been training in pickleball, right? You want to get that stroke back. You want to get that shot back. You want to get that move back, but you got to come back from something. So you got to start slowly and not rush into it. So I think it's, it's funny when you're coming back relative to reinventing yourself, it has to be a process. It doesn't just happen overnight for most, most people. So I think that's, that's something that people need to kind of figure out and get used to that, Everything is a process, whether you're coming back to something or you're reinventing yourself, it doesn't happen overnight. And yeah, and it, it hasn't for us, right? We started this a year ago and now a year later, we've got a couple podcasts. We, you know, really have done a lot in that time, but it, it didn't happen overnight. So we're coming back, but we're coming back from something. You know, we're just kind of trying to get the mechanics back. Yeah, it's a great point. And, and, um, the, somebody's the got to make it. Somebody's I, know, make it I, I see that. I knew when I was pausing there too long, too long, that I was setting myself up for the zinger, right? <laughs> I, kn- I mean, I knew it. I do this, like, profe- so I do re- this professionally now. I'm, no, I'm, you know, he has I'm, no idea how <laughs> readable, how just looking at his silly little face over there, I can tell that he's like, yeah, it's like a little, like he's <laughs> tweaking his mustache, just which making, he doesn't have. I'm but just making place. Just, yeah, making place. The word process is a, is a great word that you were, that you were using. Um, and it is a process, you know, and, you know, I know when I was um, doing different things in school, they kept re- repeating over and over and over again, trust the process, you know, just trust the process. And it's amazing what happens when you do, you know, it's, um, you know, you were talking about uh, back to school, back to work, back to, that's really true. And, and the young, when you're young, you also want change. It seems that that young brain wants like, they want more excitement. They want more change. It's like, oh, that's enough of that. You know, let me try this. Let me try that. Let me, tr-, you know, so for them to get back to something, 
it's really kind of a different process than, say, someone in their 50s, 60s, myself, 70. Well, it, is it? That's actually a good question. Maybe it's not. Maybe we, we want to act like it is because for kids, it's not that complicated. Well, it's a good excuse, don't you think? I think it's a good excuse, but I also think it's a good, it's actually a really good question as to why we don't change things up more often, meaning try new things, right? We hear that a lot. Try something different, try new things. So even if you still want to stick with pickleball, you're actually doing it right now. You may not know it. You're subconsciously or you're consciously going to different places to try pickleball, right? You're going to Egg Harbor, you're going to Wildwood Crest, you're going to Rio Grande, and you are, you're picking up somewhere new each time. So you are changing, you know, you are going, you know, you kind of are going back to something, you're coming back to something that you're very familiar with, but you're having to do it in a different environment each time. So if you can, mm. if you can do that mm. and not feel, you know, nervous about it, or um, you can get a little bit of confidence to do it, I think that makes a big difference. You know, you, you, you have a skill set that you're bringing, so you're confident in that, but you're going to do it in a different place. So you got to spark up a Th conversation. That's interesting Henry. that you should say that. I think that's something that I don't, um, speaking for myself, but I'm sure that this is going to resonate with, with, um, with a lot of people. And that... All seven of them. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you to our audience oh, for tuning oh, in. We appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs> The magnificent this seven. Would, this would resonate, meaning that you your reinvention or you get yourself hooked on something. Say, I'm you know I'm just using pickleball because that happens to be my go to obsession at the moment. But you have to be careful because when you put all your eggs in one basket, sort of what you were saying, we were talking about why, you know, younger people have so many, they're out there excited about all kinds of things. You have to be careful when all your excitement is wrapped up in one thing, which I can say that I have a tendency to do, which is that all or nothing kind of attitude. So then it can become a job. You know, when it's something that that's all you're doing every day, every day, there's no change up after a period of time. I'm watching that my time here because, you know, Rob's going to make a comment um, that <laughs> I'm, I'm, being, well, I'm waiting for you to say something interesting. I'm, and then being, I'll... I'm being timed. I'm being timed. Anyway, yeah, you have to be careful because I, I'm, I'm, I don't know when you were talking, I it went back to tennis. And I remember when we lived uh, in Medford Lakes and I was playing a lot of competitive tennis and indoor tennis and you could play year round. And I mean, it got to be two days a week and then four days a week. And then, mm -hmm. and I remember thinking, wow, this is getting to be like a job. You know, I need, I need a break from that. I should walk on Wednesdays or I should go lift weights on thing, or I should do nothing. I should read outside on. And I'm glad you brought that up because I personally have to be careful of that because what could happen to me and that's just getting to know yourself from past experiences. Yeah. Lots of past experiences. The older that you are, you have a lot more history, is that I can tend to too much, too yeah. much of a good thing. I'm the same way. I, I got back into, um, so coming back to something, I came back to a sport as well this year. I came back to rowing. I rowed crew when I was at the University of Vermont. I did a little bit after I graduated. For the last four and a half years, I've lived down the street from the Schuylkill River, Boathouse Row, and I've never thought about it until um, I read I read a book it inspired me to get back in a boat and uh, since then I've I've really gotten back into it but I have to be careful because like tennis you know tennis elbow comes from overdoing it in the sport right just hitting it way too often the same thing happens with rowing you can build up these chronic injuries because you're just doing the same thing over and over so cross training doing different things and then if you take a break, like if you take a week or two off from the boat or the river, you get excited to go back. It gives you a little bit more excitement. Sometimes it's good to let those bad habits as well kind of go away. You know, the more you play something, if you're not correcting those habits every day, they get worse and worse. But sometimes when you step away, especially in tennis, is that if I haven't played in a month or two, uh, when I get back, I'm usually at my best because my body remembers how to hit a forehand. And my body remembers where I should be tossing that serve where, it, you know, I hit it at its most efficient. But as soon as my mind gets involved, it all breaks down. Yeah. Interesting. So, yeah, it does. So that's the same thing. So I got back into rowing. I was really excited about that. And, but I, but I definitely realized quickly that I needed to, 
I needed to do other things. Same with swimming. I, every summer, I open water swim with a group of uh, guys, a group of men and women uh, down in Wildwood Crest. Most of them are former lifeguards. And when I went, I, I hadn't gone out in a couple of weeks, but I also realized I had been overdoing it when I went out yesterday. And oh, I didn't feel good. You know, my shoulders were sore and I, I got out of the water. My back was sore. So it made me realize I had to take a step back and you know, do something that didn't require a lot of energy, like this podcast. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's why I'm back. <laughs> That's why you're back. That's why you've come back. <laughs> I've come back because I, wow. yeah, I, need, a, I need a break. Wow. I'm, uh, I, I'm so flattered. You should be. <laughs> it's like, wow. <laughs> yeah. But, and then reinvention is, you know, where you're doing something, I think so much that all of a sudden you've, you've realized that you're kind of a different person. You're, you might be slightly different not so much a different person, but you're coming out of something different or coming into something different than you were before. So, you know, I, I think reinvention a lot of times, in, in my opinion, relates to behaviors. Mm -hmm. So if you've reinvented yourself, it's not so much that you're in a new profession. I think it's the behaviors it took to get you to that new profession. So what did you have to do? What did you have to say to yourself? Who did you have to get advice from to make that change? You know, so for me, I, I reinvented myself last year based on, you know, the, the definition and, you know, in, in Webster's dictionary, I went from being a financial services professional to a professor and a podcaster, They're two very different things, but really they're not that different. A lot of the fundamental attributes of what I do in my two new jobs are very similar to what I did in my old career. Where I reinvented myself was the was establishing a belief system that I could do it mm -hmm. and that I could do it successfully and that I also could get through the hurdles that were going to come with it. And, you know, I did that with help and I did that with, you know, a lot of guidance from people who, who had done it previous or prior to me successfully. So looking to those those people as mentors. And I think once I changed that belief system, I started feeling better about what I could do. Would you say the belief system, I'm thinking of chicken or the egg, would you say that because of the change, you know, say the job, the belief system changed or the belief system changed and then the job happened? The belief system started changing before the, I left the job. I knew that there were attributes of the career, and I'll call it the career. It's not, um, this isn't about, you know, I worked, I've worked at a lot of different asset managers. So it's not about one asset management company or one group of people, but um, the, the career and the culture of the career, especially since kind of like, let's say 2018, so maybe about five years ago, I, I had started seeing things that didn't or weren't corresponding with my it didn't align my value system, mm -hmm. um, and it's not that you know they were doing anything uh, you know illegal or doing anything unethical at, you know at least at different times. It was just not what I wanted. It wasn't my mission. You know I hear that a lot on on my other podcast, the Dakota podcast. People talk a lot about why they chose the the places they work, and I'm amazed how often now it's going back to mission. It was the mission of the company. It was the mission of the pension plan. It was the mission of the endowment. So people are looking to align their values with the mission of what they're looking to do. And, and it just didn't align with my values. So yeah, so anyway, so I, I do think it started before to answer, to answer your question. It started before I left and then it picked up steam. Yeah. It becomes contagious. All yeah. of a sudden you're like, yeah, I can do this. Or... You know, this is kind of out of, and then you have to start be careful. That's when you start hearing advice like, don't overextend yourself. Don't say yes to everything. Know when to pick and choose. And that took time as well. I was saying yes to everything for a while. Mm -hmm. And then I had to start saying no. And that was a whole new reinvention. I was used to just say yes. I was actually taught that fundamentally in my job. My old career was Whatever the client wants, say yes, and then figure it out once you hang up the phone. Mm. So it was all about yes. Yep, we can do that. Do you offer that? Absolutely. Let's move on, you know, just to close the business. So that's, you know, I'm, I'm sure a lot of salespeople teach that, but it does not work personally, in, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. So. I don't know if you want to add something colorful to that, but it sounds a little quiet over there. No, I'm thinking about, <laughs> it's that, you know, we're talking about whether the person changes or not. And 
you know, it's per, just adding a little bit to what you were saying is uh, personally, I don't think as a person, I mean, as my, my values or my standards, my moral compass, uh, all of that, I wouldn't say there was any change as far as reinventing myself, but definitely a change in if it's a good reinvention in the process. And even if it's not just doing something, you know, just the process of, of opening yourself up to something, something new, um, there's a change. And for me, it was always a positive change you know, happier, happier, you know, to, uh, to be doing something, to be active again, because it's taking your mind off of why you're reinventing yourself or feel the need to reinvent yourself in the first place. I think sometimes reinvention happens on its own. You know, you don't sit there going, well, uh, let's see, it didn't work out being a, you know, a family physician. I think I'll be a, you know, no, I, yeah, I think I'll be an astronaut. I think I'll be an astronaut. You know, that's not, that's not really how it works. It's a little more subtle than that, you know, and sometimes it just finds you. It just finds you. And what you were saying about career or whatever, they, you know, they'll find the older that you get. All of those reinventions are interestingly connected. My skill set which Robert will probably have something to say about that. <laughs> My skill set is present in each and every one of them in kind of the same way. Um, I find that so interesting. Uh, you know, it's when you'll, you'll see sometime, even now, if you're, say, 30 or 40 years old, look at what you've done and find the connection because that's the part that probably made you happy. That's the part that you were n talent. That's a lot of your talent. And, you know, and it carries on. Mine would have been, I really have never worked for anyone, interestingly enough. Teaching school, you're, you're in your own classroom. Um, yeah, absolutely. Selling real estate. You might have a broker, but you're doing, you're an independent contractor. Um, and always people involved and usually teaching them something. You know, whether it's in real estate, helping them find something, helping them learn what it is they need to do and, and the process, et cetera, et cetera. So it's like an interesting thing, uh, people listening out there, especially younger people, think about that. Um, because in that, you can discover things about about yourself and what and what it is that you, in case you ever need to reinvent yourself again. Yeah, no, I, I, think, I think you're absolutely right. Um, you know, for me... I, I do enjoy people. I like to be alone, but for work, I enjoy people. I, I enjoy conversation. I enjoy getting to know people's stories. I, I really like that part of what I do, both in the podcast and in the classroom. I, I love research. I like to research things. I like to research information about our guests. I like to research information about what I'm doing, you know, in the classroom. I like to research, you know, if I'm launching a business, I really like to dig into what makes it successful. So, you know, people, research, uh, autonomy. I've also been very autonomous, you know, not working for myself, but, you know, autonomy and, you know, being able to, uh, you know, basically build my own day, build my own schedule, but still have to, you know, check in now and again. So in, in our, in the world at, at Drexel, we call that kind of entrepreneurship versus intrapreneurship. Like I like to build things within an organization. Um, this was the first time I'd done something truly entrepreneurial, but it was still kind of aligned to a lot of those, mm -hmm. you know, kind of fundamentals that, that make me happy, you know, that I enjoy. And then you kind of put them all together and you just, you know, I said it to you kind of kiddingly and then just keep making plays, you know, you just keep going forward, you know, just go for the next shot. If it doesn't work, you miss it. You know, it's, it's kind of a cheap sports analogy, but you know, you just, you just wait till the next step bat, you know, and get a hit the next time. So, yeah. yeah so, yeah. I mean, lots to explore. I'll in say, this oh. upcoming season, um, I'll wait till next week. Or you can work on your, uh, you can work on your timing. About <laughs> <laughs> a boom. <laughs> yeah, we'll uh, we'll get there. But it's uh, this was a wonderful. You know, he just said, "Did you hear this audience?" He just said that how much he enjoys, you know, people. I I'm not feeling. I'm not feeling the enjoyment here. Oh, I'm sudden. enjoying everything about this. <laughs> I'm enjoying your coffee. I'm uh, I'm ready to roll. You well, ready this to is, rock? Yeah, this is the first episode of what we know or is going to be many to come. 
Um, and one of the reasons for that is we have editors now <laughs> who will help us edit this in a timely fashion. Uh, that was all, that's anybody interested in launching a podcast. Uh, it's not that hard to buy the equipment. It's not that hard to sit down and talk, but it does take some time to edit. So make sure you're aware that that's where the time commitment is. And then you'll, uh, you'll be all set. So then you'll be successful, hire some editors and start pumping these things out. Yeah. Anyway, I'm so happy to be back. So thank you so much. I will remind our audience that if you haven't been there in a while, uh, we are located at www.12poundpodcast.com. You can find all of our past episodes as well as this episode on our website, as well as your favorite podcast platform. Uh, we will be rolling out episodes every Wednesday morning at 8 a.m. Uh, so stay tuned on an ongoing basis. I think we're going to drop a couple of these in the beginning so you can get reacclimated to us and our style and you know, you can, you can come back. What to, number would this be, Rob? Uh, this would be, I'll have to check what the number is exactly. I think like 28 or 29. I think it's, this is number 26. 26? So we did, we did a, we did a quarter of a century. We did 25 and this will be number 26. And we've got some fun ones coming up. We're going to do some more interviews as well. Uh, we'll talk more about that as we, as we come along, but um, lots of fun things to, to chat about as we move forward. Cool. Thank you Very as cool. always. Very cool. And thank you to our audience for tuning in to the 12 Pound Podcast. Yes, and it's good to be back and we're uh, we're rocking and rolling. We're ready to go. All right. And that's a wrap. <laughs>